right. Hi, everybody. My name is Eric. I'm going to talk about WebAssembly and you. All right. So most of you have probably heard of WebAssembly. You might have some idea of how it works, but I'm just going to start from the beginning and move through it pretty quickly and then talk about how it actually affects us as JavaScript developers. Um, so first, what is WebAssembly? Uh, it's being developed by a W3C community group. Um, W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium, um, and we'll explain a little bit about that later. Um, WebAssembly, first off, is a safe, portable, size and load time efficient binary compiler target which offers near native performance. Now that's a lot of words, so let's break that down a little bit. The safe and portable come from the fact that it runs directly in a browser, so it is just as safe and just as portable as any web page, any JavaScript that you write. Uh, it can't go in to your computer and cause all kinds of malicious things to happen. Um, size and load time efficient is because we're talking binary here. It's at as small and compact as they can design it to be uh, and still run as a program. Um, it offers near native performance. That's the key. And again, I'll get into that more later. First, let's talk a little bit of history. Um, HTML comes around about 25 years ago, JavaScript in 95. Uh, after that, if you wanted to run anything heavy duty, uh, you had to use some kind of plugin, Flash, Java applets. Um, if, if you guys remember Flash, there was this big issue when the iPhones came out and suddenly you couldn't run Flash. So you couldn't open a lot of web pages in the iPhone. That's because these plugins didn't run in the browser. They had security problems that um, because they were running in your actual OS instead of in the browser, they couldn't really make all of that mesh properly. Um, Chrome comes around a little bit later, uh, and that's when everyone starts working um, in what's called the JavaScript wars. Um, and that's when all the browsers started really fighting to see who could run web pages the fastest. Suddenly, JavaScript is a programming language now. It's not just for little scripting. It's not for slow little events. You can actually run things like React apps. Um, Imscripten comes around. I'll explain that more later. Uh, Google tried uh, in 2011, and it's still kind of around, to build native clients so you could run like C++ code in a browser. The problem is uh, you've got security issues there. You've got what's called dynamic link library hell, basically dependency hell. Um, so that just didn't work, and most browsers didn't support that properly. Um, then ASM comes around, and I'm going to talk a little about ASM. Uh, it's a subset of JavaScript. Um, so it's actually vanilla JavaScript, but it's just been tweaked and optimized as much as possible to let your, your parser and your compiler know exactly what's going on so that your JavaScript can run as fast as possible. Um, it was used, or it is used currently, as a compile target for C and C++. So for example, Mozilla and Epic, um, they ported the Unreal Engine 3 way back in 2013 when ASM first came out. Uh, they ported it in four days. Suddenly, you can run Unreal Engine 3 in the browser at about half native speed. Um, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, there was also a Humble Bundle that came out with a bunch of games like FTL, Democracy 3, some like, you know, decent indie games. Uh, so ASM looks kind of like this. Uh, if you notice, it looks a lot like regular JavaScript, but it's got these extra like or zeros and some kind of bitwise operations. That's to let the compiler know um, sort of this is going to be an integer. I'm going to treat this as an integer. Um, so it gives you that heads up and it lets you optimize the speed. Um, yeah, so for example, uh, if you look at the n equals uh, n or 0, that just tells it, okay, this is going to be a 32-bit integer. You don't have to worry about typing anymore. Um, you don't have to worry, oh, what if it's a string? No, it's, it's going to lock it in for you. Um, so that's what ASM does. ASM is about twice as fast as regular old JavaScript that we've been coding um, because of those optimizations. That said, it's still about half the speed of native code. Um, even with all the optimizations that we've had in the browser for the last 20 years. Uh, so let's move on to WebAssembly. This is the point, right? Um, WebAssembly was uh, started, or it's, uh, it's being designed by this community group. Um, they started back in April of 2015, so that's less than two years ago. 
Um, by June, they had a public announcement, hey, we're working on this, uh, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and they made all these promises that I mentioned in the first slide that are kind of the holy grail of browser code. Um, you know, getting high-end code to run fast in the browser. That's kind of crazy, but by March 2016, uh, again, less than a year ago, they had experimental implementations. Um, they had actually just the code by then, this is still experimental, um, but you could run it in Chrome Canary or Firefox Nightly. Uh, the files were about half the size of JavaScript files, um, so sending it over the wire, again, is twice as fast because it's binary. It doesn't, uh, it's not a text JavaScript file. Um, the parsing also, because it's optimized in binary, the parsing is 10 times faster than JavaScript. Um, and why does that happen? That happens because Wasm is actually an, abtra an abstract syntax tree. If you remember from yesterday with Tessa's talk, um, that's what most things get parsed into. So this, this is already organized so that the parsing literally just says, okay, fill in my nodes. They're all in order. They're all ready to go. So that's why you get the, the 10 times um, parsing speed there. Uh, all of that together means that compile time, which happens, again, in the browser. This is on their computer while they're waiting for it to run. Compile time is halved. So again, we're running twice as fast here as JavaScript, as ASM. The fastest JavaScript we have is running at twice the, um, is running twice as slow. So uh, then we've got in October here, okay, this is some of the latest updates I could find. They have an MVP candidate, that's a minimum viable product candidate. So they have actually completed pretty much everything they need to actually put this into browsers and put it out in the real world. Now here's the thing. It's totally reliant on browsers being able to run this. You're going to run it in your V8 engine or um, SpiderMonkey or whatever JavaScript engine you have in your browser, but the browser and the engine have to support it. Here's the best part. I kind of, uh, I kind of hid it from you, but that community group is made up of these people. Um, people from Google, from Mozilla, from Microsoft, which that's the Edge logo, um, we'll probably never see it again, uh, <laughs> and, and Apple. They're all working to put this into their browsers. They're the ones designing it. They're the ones building it. Um, they're the ones who are implementing it. So that's really cool. That means as soon as it's ready to go, you'll be able to use it in production websites on all of these browsers. The best part, though, if you're using Opera or something, for some reason, it just doesn't have this capability yet, you can translate it back into ASM, which is just standard JavaScript. So worst case scenario, you just port it back to the next fastest thing, and it can run in any browser. Um, now, how does all of that work? Uh, you've got something called Imscripten, which I'll get to, Binarian, which sounds like Targaryen, <laughs> and Wabbit. <laughs> um, these are the official definitions of how to say those two words. If you look in the GitHub, they say Binarian, just like Targaryen, or however you want to pronounce it, um, and Webit. Um, Emscripten is a tool that translates, um, that compiles uh, something like C or whatever else you want into ASM.js. Uh, so that's what I was talking about before. Uh, Binarian uh, takes that ASM and turns it into WebAssembly. Okay? So that's also the thing that would translate it back in an older browser. Um, Wabbit is the WebAssembly binary toolkit that's once you have the binary, this thing will allow you to do different operations with it. Um, you know, if you want to transpile it into a slightly different version, including one of the best parts. You're probably thinking as a developer, I can't deal with binary. Um, there is a one-to-one -one text representation of, uh, of the binary that's going to look a lot like Lisp, and I've got a, I've got a slide for that too. Oh, and. Uh, I missed the joke, but I know we're all waiting for Game of Tunes, um, so that'll be fun. All right, so this is the current representation. They're still working out exactly what that's going to look like, and they want a more JavaScript-friendly uh, syntax, but this is the Fibonacci. Um, so the same thing that I showed you in the ASM, uh, but this is now in WebAssembly. 
Um, so you could go in there and code this if you wanted, but this is a compiler target, remember. So most people aren't going to be coding directly in this. But when you open up DevTools, this is what you're going to see. You're going to be able to go in and actually make sure, oh, is the WebAssembly part of my code running properly on the front end? Because you don't have to dig through the binary. You can look at this. Um, and again, like it's fairly straightforward. Um, the, the I32s and all of that just say like it's a 32-bit integer. Um, you know, it's it's assembly code, so it's a little more um, it's a little more arcane. Uh, okay, so what does that let us do? It lets us do all of these things. Heavy lifting. Again, this is near native speed. So what that's uh, let me back up a little bit here. Um, yeah. So so again, this is as of October. Okay, still experimental, but it's twice the speed of ASMJS. So that's within, I think, 5 or 10% of native code. Um, so basically, you're talking about being able to run virtual reality, games, CAD software, anything heavy, heavy computing. You can run that in the browser basically at the same speed. Uh, so why do we care? We're JavaScript developers, okay? It's not going to replace JavaScript. What it is going to do is give us one-to-one -one mapping from WebAssembly code to JavaScript code. What does that mean? That means you don't have to know WebAssembly because you can just download a library like Lodash, okay? And it'll give you all those utility functions, and it'll be four times faster than basic JavaScript. So all of your super heavy compute, your encryption, anything else will run faster, more reliably, uh, it's still backwards compatible. Again, it shows up in your dev tools. So everything you need right there. Uh, these are some of my sources. You can go check them out. It's pretty cool. And that's my talk. <laughs>